Welcome to the MRP Tech Podcast. This is episode 62. My name is Matt, and this is the weekly podcast for everyday tech for everyday people. Thanks so much for tuning in again this time. As we move along this week, we're going to join part two of a series that I've been working on. And last week was a really exciting episode for me. I had a whole lot of fun presenting this to you. And if you haven't watched or listened to last week's episode, uh, we discussed Skywave Linux, and basically uh, it's a Linux distribution specifically made for software-defined radio and amateur radio operators uh, to access the free and open source software that is available to them uh, as, as radio enthusiasts. And I jumped right in last week, super excited about this episode, because I, I really had never heard of this before. and really what I wanted to do was was talk about a project that, that has um, really excited me more than any other project that I've been working on uh, since joining PodNuts and actually since I've been doing this podcast uh, over the last year or so. So really, uh, this project has sort of sparked an interest in me of, of hey, I could actually help this project out by by promoting them a little bit more. So over the last week, I have reached out to the developer of Skywave Linux. And his name is Phil. And Phil is an amateur radio operator. Uh, and he was uh, excited to uh, definitely see that uh, Skywave is uh, sort of propagating its way through the uh, the podcast and YouTube channels uh, recently. And um, there's, a, there's a few other people out there that are really pushing this as well. I'm going to talk about them in a little bit. Um, but, but Phil is also the developer of uh, something called Mofo Linux. He's been, he's been working on other projects since probably about the early 2000s. And he basically uh, said that Skywave fits a, a sort of uh, niche environment that, that he, uh, has been looking for for a long time. Um, he left me several messages, and I'm going to read parts of those uh, to you now. Um, basically, he started uh, this project when he was he wanted a workaround for being able to listen to the BBC without resorting to a uh, VPN um, when he was in China a few years ago. And Skywave, um, in Skywave, all of the apps are are basically complete, uh, and, and especially when it comes to SDR. Uh, some of them are, are sort of stripped down um, on like Android and iOS. So there's a lot of really powerful tools for software-defined radio in Skywave Linux. And I talked a little bit about those last week. I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail today uh, on those subjects as well. So after uh, going back and forth uh, a few times with Phil and, and leaving each other messages, um, what I couple of things that I wanted to, to discuss about this project. Um, first of all, this is a, it's a small project, uh, and, and, but I cannot stress enough the need for a distribution like this. Um, and a few people have left comments on the YouTube channel about this as well. Now, one of the things that I talked about last week is uh, this was based off Ubuntu 16.04. And with that, I, I sort of was wondering what's going to happen down the road when Unity is dropped uh, as, as uh, Ubuntu's main desktop. So I asked Phil uh, what he uh, plans on doing when it comes to the Unity desktop. And, and Phil says Unity is pretty, but it uses a lot of resources he says he's stripped it down and he's still not happy with the performance. He's looked at Mate and Cinnamon. They're quite nice. He's been considering one of those for the next desktop. His main OS for other things in radio is Linux Mint. He likes the Cinnamon desktop quite a bit, um, but he wants to build a Mate system just to compare uh, the two what he has right now. And he suggested that maybe he should build a Skywave Linux system uh, using both without without Unity and see which kind of gets traction in the community. I think that's a great idea. Um, I definitely think that any of those suggestions would be a a, a great implementation for Skywave Linux. I think that uh, there are certainly options available. Um, 
and I'm, I'm not going to be the one to, uh, to say which way to go. And I'd be curious in, in um, helping out and, and, and uh, giving a, a test run to any of those. If, uh, if, if need be, I'd, I'd love to, uh, to work out some of those in the future. I asked him uh, also if as a Linux community, we could do something to help him. Um, and sort of behind the scenes here at Podnuts, I have um, been talking with Steve McLaughlin about this project just briefly uh, several times, explaining to him that this is sort of uh, something that I stumbled across and, and um, I got really excited about. Uh, and I cannot stress to you how much I want to push this this project and help this project out um, for various reasons. Um, and one of the things that if I could do anything as a podcaster is help two different people communicate together to help uh, collaborate on a project. And maybe those who are listening know other people around that are looking for a project to get involved with. And if you are someone who knows the ins and outs of Linux, you're a developer, you are a coder, you are uh, someone who has helped in other projects and um, looking for a, a way to to help out in a, a new community of sorts, uh, I suggest uh, contacting Phil. Uh, the easiest way probably is on his Facebook page, the Skywave Linux Facebook page. Just send him a message. Um, he's really looking for... And really interested in making Skywave Linux more hardware agnostic. Uh, currently, right now, he explains that uh, Skywave is only AMD 64 compatible uh, for those those types of systems, uh, and he really is trying to uh, get Skywave running on on any system. So, if you know somebody who is is um, capable of maybe helping out in a project like this, um, please, please, please help us out and, and get these two in touch with each other so that we can, um, get this, this, uh, Linux desktop running on, um, all sorts of different hardware. I know that there was a few comments on YouTube, um, with, with, a a couple of different people that were having issues, um, with things like getting the mouse, uh, trackpad to work, um, or getting a mouse to work. I can't recall which off the top of my head, uh, and just, uh, odds and ends, um, issues that, that have come up and cropped up, uh, during test trials of this. But even in that case, um, the, uh, the same, uh, person on YouTube that was having the issues with that was saying, this is, this is great. Um, we need this, we need, uh, something out there for software defined radio. And, I'm still learning a little bit uh, about this myself. I spent the last week really um, jumping in here and learning as best as I could about software defined radio. And there is a great video that I watched and I didn't even realize it at first. Um, it's called Hacking the Wireless World with Software Defined Radio. And this is a security researcher uh, from Black Hat Europe in 2014 talking about exactly what software defined radio can do and the research he put behind it. And the more that I learn about this, the more it just blows my mind of things that are out there that I didn't even realize was possible. So what I mean by that is I didn't know anything about SDR radio and, and um, watching this video, to give you an example, one of the things that this researcher did is he showed that, um, and, and I didn't realize this was a, a security researcher at first, and I didn't realize it was Black Hat as I was watching this. Um, I guess I wasn't paying all that much attention at first. And he was showing how radio waves are, are propagated all the time, and most of us don't pay any attention to those. And what he did is he explained um, how certain things work, like uh, when we go into a restaurant and we get those buzzers that go off when our food is ready or when we're ready to be seated, and explained that those were um, using radio waves to communicate with the kitchen or, or with the hostess and, and back and forth, and radio signals are created to, to make that buzzer go off. And what he did is he did research and he worked on the, the project and, and developed his own software uh, using SDR radio to see the frequencies of these, these uh, buzzers that go off. And uh, he was actually able to um, 
walk into a restaurant with his boss and uh, said he needed to step away for a minute and pulled out his cell phone um, using SDR uh, radio and software he developed. He then uh, made his boss's uh, buzzer go off to go grab his food and he brought it up to the wait staff uh, to get his food and of course his food wasn't ready. Um, just showing the concept of how dangerous this could have been um, had it been in a, a higher uh, situation, uh, you know, a more serious situation, uh, how easy it is to intercept these signals and, you know, cause somebody to move from one location to another uh, just by using these these buzzers or whatever, whatever it is you want. And a few other examples of this, um, Things like using your key fob for your car, uh, SDR radio can pick up the radio frequencies from uh, the message sending from your key, key fob to your car, um, and you can definitely see when the signal is being transmitted using SDR. Um, another example of this is um, tracking airlines, and tracking airlines, uh, uh, he, sh he goes on to show a, a picture of all the different antennas on, a, on an airplane and all the different things that they're broadcasting, such as altitude, their speed, uh, their uh, location, all these different uh, types of radio frequencies being sent. And you can actually watch airlines uh, taking off and landing and seeing what planes are taking off in your area. Um, and uh, it's a really neat thing to see um, things every day that you, I guess, wouldn't realize uh, uses radio frequencies and how they can be manipulated if uh, a person smart enough goes to the extreme lengths to, to, to take care of these things. And that's not really what I want to get into with this project, but it just blew my mind that uh, how easy it was for someone to do this. And, um, but at the same time, there are, are a lot of practical things that I'm, I'm finding are really kind of cool about software-defined radio. And so looking in the SkyWave Linux, I, last week I talked a little bit about QT Linux or QT radio. Um, I started with that project this week or that, that piece of software this week um, after learning about things like GNU radio and being able to connect to servers online because I didn't have an antenna that I could use at all with, with software to find radio. And so I mentioned last week I had some issues with sound and I thought that they, I had those resolved in Skywave Linux because I had sound at, at one point in time. And I actually reached out to the developer asking him about um, the best uh, servers to connect to uh, using QT radio. And he helped me out and when I connected to them, I could never get a real sound out. I was having some issues. And um, until just today, I realized that uh, for some reason, um, my default settings are, were all uh, changed for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, what happened. Um, I had sound running and then all of a sudden the default sound got switched to, to something else. And, um, I, I could see all the radio waves in QT radio. I could see that I was picking up signals, but I just didn't have any sound. And um, I, I did um, just happen to go into settings and and realize that was the case. And now I've got sound working again in, in SkyWave. And I'm still guessing that this is pretty early in development, SkyWave uh, is. And um, I'm sure it's been around a little while. Um, but the more people that sort of bang on it and, and try to work through these issues really is going to make this a more stable project in the future. And that's sort of the way I'm approaching it. So I'm not really bothered by all of these things at this point. I'm trying to see what I can do to help make this project um, better. So I mentioned last week, I didn't have a radio and um, I do want to send a, a special thanks out to door, uh, door, the door door geek uh, who sent me a, SDR dongle this week to, to test out and to sort of review. Uh, I just got it in yesterday um, and had a, a, I was late at school last night with a, a concert uh, and I've got another concert tonight and, and I've had a, a few minutes to work on this, but basically this, this SDR dongle, what it is, there's two different antennas um, that sort of uh, they're telescopic and uh, they have a mounting base and they sort of screw into a USB dongle and um, I was rather impressed uh, with these antennas when they arrived. Um, th I'll put a link in the show notes. This, this SDR um, dongle uh, 
works with Mac, Linux, and and Windows. Um, basically, I just plugged it in, and it started working right away. There was no configuration I needed with SkyWave um, Linux. I really, really like that and appreciated that. Just just plug and play with this dongle. Um, and you can really, for really inexpensive, uh, for, for like 20, 25 bucks, you can, um, you can get a, a radio and you can see what's happening locally um, with SDR. You can pick up regular FM channels. You can pick up uh, any type of amateur radio signals, uh, CB uh, frequencies, and so on. Um, you just kind of scan through your frequencies. If you know where to look, you can, you can actually see uh, with something that's called a waterfall, you can see the, the radio signals being picked up visually in these, uh, different types of software. So I've been experimenting with QT radio and also with something called, uh, cubic SDR, which seemed to be a little bit easier to use. QT, I think is a little older, um, needs, needs a lot more, um, uh, updating. I think you can scan in and, and, and go into more detail, uh, and, and more fine tuning with QT radio, but cubic SDR is a, is a great example of, of, of something that, um, will get you started quickly and help you learn how to use this software. And again, every single thing that I've tried out in SkyWave uh, with this SDR dongle has just worked uh, flawlessly. And I'm, I'm really excited to dig in deeper this week and really start using some of this software. Um, I, I, this morning when I got to work, I was excited to try this out um, before, before I got into things today. Um, a piece of software called Dump1090. And what that does, um, you sort of set your location, uh, your latitude and longitude, and then a frequency correction uh, to sort of hone in uh, this these antennas to be a little bit more accurate. And when you do that, um, you can actually track air traffic uh, in your area. And um, I wasn't sure how good it was going to work where I was because I'm sort of in a building that with, with cement walls and... Um, I don't get cell phone reception in, in my, my room at all, but, um, I, this telescopic antennas are actually good size antennas for, for, for what comes with this dongle. And, um, sure enough, it was just plug and play. And, um, within 15 seconds of zoning into my location, um, it loaded up and it pinged that, that there was a, a, an airplane flying overhead. Um, now I live in a mountainous area and um, I could only track the airplane for a little while, um, but but when I get a few minutes, I'm actually um, uh, when I go home, I'm I'm actually at a much uh, better area that's not so mountainous, and I'd be curious to see what, what and, and interested in finding out, um, you know, how many it picks up all at once, and uh, and really seeing how powerful this little tool is. Um, so this SDR dongle really makes SkyWave Linux. Uh, come to life. And um, it's it's a RTL-SDR um, dongle. Comes with two antennas. You can buy it off of Amazon. And uh, thanks again, Dor, for sending this my way because it really helped me review this project. And I'm going to keep working on this. Um, I've got a lot of great ideas for this little tool. Um, another person that I want to uh, send a quick thank you to is Kevin Laughlin, who has a YouTube channel um, under his name. And if you type in his name, Kevin Laughlin, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, and then Skywave Linux, you'll come up to his channel. Um, he has done so many great videos on the software in Skywave Linux, done a far better job than I could have. Um, he knows he's he's been in it this, this situation far longer than I have. Uh, I'm just the new guy. I'm just the newbie on this, when it comes to this, and I really don't know a whole lot about it yet. Um, but, but definitely if you're interested in this, check out his videos. Um, he's been posting them, uh, frequently here, um, uh, recently and, um, just give a big thanks out to him for, for doing those videos. Cause he's really done an excellent job on that. And I'll put those in the show notes as well. Um, with that, um, there are a couple of apps that I've checked out um, for iOS. Smart SDR is a great uh, SDR app for ISS, I- iOS. And also for Android, um, GLSDR would be a great Android app. And 
because of this app uh, on Android, one of the projects I would love to try out is uh, I would love <clears throat> to try to download this on my Remix Mini and see if I can plug in the SDL SDR dongle into the Remix and have a mini PC hooked up to uh, this SDR app and uh, let's see if I can can use that. I'm I'm really curious if that works. I I, I you know don't have high hopes for it to trying, but it, it gives me something to try out uh, this weekend. So there's some really cool things going on here um, with software defined radio. And as I learn more about it in, in the future, I'll probably come back to this and and really uh, go in depth. Um, it's a whole lot of to me what the the deal is is it's really fun to see things and hear things that uh, you didn't know were there uh, that are around us all the time. And there are radio waves propagating all over the place and just seeing what's out there, what's available. Uh, For instance, um, last night I was listening to the uh, East Coast tech net over the radio waves. And there's people talking from all over the world on this Eastern reflector, it's called. Uh, it's it's a, a bunch of repeaters that are connected together on the East Coast. And there was guys from Florida talking to, to guys in Buffalo, New York, talking to guys in Los Angeles. And it was all over the place. And this happens every Tuesday night um, uh, over the airwaves. And it, it's really awesome to take a look at it. Um, and things like Skywave make, make it much more easy to zone into to all of these different frequencies, uh, the different, uh, uh, like two meter and 10 meter and 70 centimeter and all those different, uh, types of frequencies that are out there. And as I mentioned, I, I, last week, things like echo link, I, I mentioned to the developer that QTEL would be something great to add. And he's always open to things that, um, help, uh, hams to their their ability to communicate with each other so he's all in for anything like that um so i've had a couple of 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 comments on how to to improve this and if anybody as i mentioned is interested in in helping this project um please contact me or contact phil at skywave linux um this really is a great project there's um it really fits a need that that a lot of people have currently, and um, and I'm I'm getting lots of feedback on that. And even if you don't know anything about radio, um, you don't need to uh, be afraid to contact them. If you are are you've built your own Linux distro and you know how uh, to make things like uh, hardware compatibility between other devices, please get in touch with them and, and get them on the right track. And let's make this available to anybody out there who wants to to be able to, to use this type of software. So thanks for all the feedback I've gotten on this episode. Uh, I'm going to uh, stop here uh, and I will probably continue one more week with this after I've learned how to use the SDR dongle a little bit and, and really show you um, what it's capable of and start getting into depth with, with some of the software. So uh, stick with me. Um, now we're going to get into the, uh, the, the nitty gritty of this and, and what it can actually do. And if you are also out there trying SDR or Skywave Linux, uh, send me a message and let me know uh, if you've gotten it to work, have you, what types of things you've tried, what types of things you've done. And um, I know that there are some issues, uh, you know, and we've sort of talked about those things too. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm pushing this project and maybe, maybe we can come together as a community and help this project grow and, and get off the ground uh, and running um, and, get this out there for people to use and, and, and get more, more links users, number one, and, um, helping an, another community out as well. So, so you could send me an email, MRP tech reviews at gmail.com. Don't forget to check out the other great shows at Podnuts. And, um, if you're, if you're looking for somebody else to support, uh, 
the guys over at Podnuts could use your support, uh, even if it's something as simple as a $1 monthly donation that would really help out over there. Uh, just go to podnuts.com and clip the, click the uh, subscribe button and um, help them out because they help me out in so many different ways. I'm going to stop there because I'm running short on time, but thanks so much for listening. We will see you next time.